All right, welcome back to the big board. Here we go. Let's have a look at this uh, 48th Panzer Corps from Counterattack Magazine. I think that's the fourth issue or something along those lines. And, uh, you know, we haven't got very far yet. And I think there's a reason for that. Uh, a game does play very quickly. But there's some there's some interesting randomness that happens that is I don't know that just it, it either it's uncomfortable or disconcerting or it's not working for me. But uh, the game is not grabbing me by the you know what's and saying hey play the next turn. So let's let's talk about that particular feeling and what and why it's being evoked by this game. In the combat system, as I understand it, and there's always a good chance that I am wrong. Uh, well, it's probably more than a good chance that I'm wrong, but anyway. Uh, you know, hey, don't be so, self, so self-effacing, Kevin. Have some confidence. <clears throat> In the game, there are combat factors on the left here. And I'm just gonna, let's find something to zoom in on so that we can uh, have a little gee wizardry at it. Have a look, have a squiz. Uh, down here somewhere. Let's get in nice and close and have a chat, right? So, uh, we've got these combat factors here, and each combat factor is a particular type. So this is a weapons platform, uh, personnel, people, right? And there's tanks in here somewhere, if we can find a tank. There we go, uh, here, these are tanks uh, that have a number against them as well. A uh, little modifier. Now, what happens is that when armor fires at armor, and we use the word fire, not combat, uh, the, you're firing at each other, even though the hexes are a mile apart. And I guess it's just a terminology thing. But anyway, armor fires at armor. You multiply the value by two. When it fires at uh, personnel, same deal. You're going to fire uh, multiply by two. And then when personnel fire at armor, you're going to get a, uh, a quarter of the value. So this would be worth one if we were shooting at armor, right? Because it's a five. And, uh, you know, other your supporting arty is halved and things like that. So you've got to do a little bit of math to kind of work out what all the factors are. And the defender, defensive fire is going to typically go first. So you're going to get to shoot at the guys who are attacking you before they shoot at you and then you resolve the combat. So we would tally up these little chappies here. It'd be four factors, say, and three factors and three factors. That's uh, 10 factors there attacking this stack. And you're gonna have to resolve against the toughest unit in the stack. But let's say I've got 10 factors. I go uh, to the terrain effects chart which is just underneath the camera, so I'm not going to move it. And I would look at this this kind of ugly looking yellow pukey sort of it looks a combination of like kind of snot and some other color sort of bile or something mi mixed together. That's actually kind of like a broken terrain, and that that would move this combat one shift to the left. So we're going to do that. Keeping in mind the number was ten, right? And there's a stream there that's unbridged that is going to move it one to the left as well. And as far as I can tell, we accumulate all these shifts. So keep that in mind. Let's just say, let's just actually move. Let's do this and we'll keep it interesting if I can do this. See, I didn't clip the counters and that's how why they, they catch together like that. And that's why you clip your counters. All right, so we have two stacks and I'm gonna attack this in defensive fire. Both these guys are attacking and these are gonna defensive fire against these guys. And so we're gonna fire these guys. So yeah, 10 factors going in, minus two column shifts, right? So now we're gonna jog up to here and we're gonna look and we we'll see that <clears throat> we didn't have 12 factors. We had uh, 10 and so we have to go down to our nearest column, which is eight and then drop down two columns because for the terrain effects, which means I have two chances in six of achieving a result against the enemy. And this is where it starts to get a little swingy and a little iffy. So keep that in mind for the moment, right? So I would now roll a die. Let's just roll a die. Let's just say I rolled a one 
And that is a, it's gonna be a morel. That's the morel check and this is the step losses. So I'm gonna make a morel check or not. I can choose not to and then I stay in the hex. If I make no check, sorry, I retreat the number of hexes equal to that result. Uh, and, the, and that's what happens. Sorry, so I'm the attacker. Sorry, I'm the attacker. The defender would either retreat if they didn't make them morale, if they didn't make a morale check, right? And I would retreat one. And then I'm not able to participate in that combat. So I've kind of pushed those guys back for the time being. Or I can then, uh, I could elect to check the uh, morale, which is three, and see if I can survive that. And if I fail, I take a number of step losses equal to that, and then I retreat, so then I'm out of the combat. But if I pass, I lose the number of steps, and then I stay in the combat. So all of those little die rolls and things happen. So there's a sort of a compounding effect going on there. You, you may or may not roll for morale. So let's say this guy here, we're attacking this, let's say this is the top. We'll just use the top unit because it's, uh, where are all my little counters? So that guy goes down to a two now. So he's gonna be a two. All right. And I'm just gonna do one thing here while you guys, cause I'm gonna mute my phone while I'm recording here. I don't know if I can do that. No, I can't. Well, so we take step loss. If I didn't elect to, to do that morale check, assuming I uh, passed, uh, I would have to retreat and that would halve the value of my attack, right? Basically. So now instead of nine factors coming in, I've got eight factors coming in and I've got all these factors here and then we would do, then we would get a chance to execute our attack here. And I would have eight, and six and six and and so that's eight nine ten eleven that's 23 i think 23 factors so i would go up to this column here 23 factors all right and i would be on the co that column we drop one for the stream so i'm on this column i'm going to go up one because i've got two glue you can't see because i've got two uh attack coming from two hexes. So I'll be back on the 20 column. Now if you ever get, if you get up into the 20 column, you now I roll a four, right? So it's gonna be a two one result on the defender. You get up into the 20 column, you're guaranteed some sort of result, but un unless you can do that, you can't, you're, you have this uh, element where you're not able to impact the combat at all. And that happens a lot, particularly given the broad front you have to fight against, right? You're going to have these very low end attacks where nothing, uh, either nothing happens or someone is forced to retreat because they don't want to take a step loss. And there's no replacements in this game and also no supply, by the way, uh, to, to, uh, to, that impacts the attack. So in some cases where I'm trying to advance and get across the river, I really want to take that, uh, that, that hex or be able to execute that two, two pronged attack here. I'm going to have to take the step losses. That's going to reduce my odds in this sort of factor based equation. And then we have to then bear, bear with whatever that may be. Right. So there's that. Then there's a die roll that needs to happen if you want to move and you're in a zone of control. You've got to be successful with that die roll uh, to, to uh, extricate yourself. And that can play all sorts of havoc. You can see right across here, all these units failed their die rolls, so they're stuck. Those German units are stuck there for the turn. Fortunately, 11th Panzer has come in and kind of begun building a second line of defense. But now we've got to extricate ourselves and kind of move back from there. So there's a, there's a fair amount of, there's a little bit of fiddling going on. There's a lot of luck here, particularly with these low odds attacks. And the low, when I say the odds, right, I'm talking about low factor, not odds, obviously. But it's absolutely worth my while with just two factors to 
do an attack because I might get lucky and roll a one. And I could actually force these guys, if they don't want to lose a step, I can force them to retreat one. And because combat happens before movement, that means that those guys are out of combat for the, for the turn. They can do a hasty attack, uh, and, which is uh, an attack pa as part of movement. But generally speaking, combat is happening, prepared attacks are happening beforehand. So it's, uh, it's a little odd. And I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my little brain around the, you know, the, the, the best approach for the Soviets. Uh, the Germans, it's kind of, uh, you know, how long do you want to, how long do you want to try and hold a given hex and, and what are you going to do with it for, uh, is it worth keeping? So here, uh, we had weak units in, but some strong units on the flanks. The, the Soviets kind of pressed in with uh, just one regiment. Uh, they got ahead of the other guys who were caught up, stuck in zones of control. And uh, they went ahead and they, they, they closed and tried to attach themselves, you know, get adjacent to as many units as they could so that they couldn't run away and they'd be kind of locked in place. Well, that did happen, but these flanking units went around and, and surrounded the unit didn't get great odds, but we forced a, a, a retreat and the retreat rules forced the elimination of that unit. So it's, it's all interesting and curiously interesting, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll just ignore the artwork, right? I mean, the artwork's atrocious. The, it's, it's horrible. And let's just let that be what it is. It's a time period thing and it's a cost thing from back in the day. So uh, I understand there's a new sexier version from from the, one of the Japanese uh, 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 magazine publishers, probably Six Angles or whatever it may be. Uh, have not had a look at that yet and uh, probably not planning on it. So I'm gonna goof around with this a little bit more just to see what happens. Uh, I'm already seeing that it is very difficult for the Soviets to sort of gain the, the sort of uh, heavy advances that they secured in, in this historically. But uh, the Germans are also having a hard time uh, retreating, <coughs> retreating back uh, effectively as well. This whole river area is very congested because I chose to bring the Soviet reinforcements on early, at the earliest moment that I could. And uh, we're just starting to make a little bit of a breakthrough here. So we'll see what happens. I, I, I just want to give you some impressions. You know, these are all early stage impressions I'm giving you uh, just to give you a feel for it. Uh, if I do actually finish the game, then we'll have a full um, a, a fuller conversation and we'll see where we get to. All right, that was a bit of a long, long, long exercise, but the net of it is I'm, I'm challenged by the combat model and uh, to a lesser extent, the sequence of play. We will talk more. Adios.